It is the 41st millennium. The bright ideals of the Age of Wonder have withered and died, and the Imperium of Man continues its inevitable decline. Most of mankind's history is obscured at best, and deliberately falsified at worst. Rebute Gilliman, Lord Commander and Primogenitor of the Noble Ultramarines and their successors, has charged men like me in his order of historians known as the Logos Historica to create the first true reliable history of the Imperium. I am the Chronicler, and there is one absolute truth. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. Since the affliction known as the Cicatrix Maledictum in the Imperium has emerged to bedevil the skies, the insidious threat of chaos has risen in prominence. Not even the likes of the Inquisition or the Administratum can easily suppress knowledge of the heretic and the demon. Few know this better than those unfortunate soldiers who have had to face the horrors unleashed by the archenemy in battle, as I discovered when I encountered former Astra Militarum Sergeant Ajax. When I do succeed in convincing Astra Militarum officers to share their accounts, I normally have to spend considerable time separating facts from the exaggerated tales spun to try and impress people. I knew, however, as soon as I saw the haunted look in the eyes of Ajax that this wouldn't be the case here. Ajax told me that he doesn't sleep anymore, and that what little rest he does get is soon destroyed by the nightmares of the screams of the men and women of the 114th Steel Legion being torn apart and eviscerated by the chain-bladed axes of the heretic Astartes known as the World Eaters. Their berserker fury interrupted only by the shouts of kill, maim, burn, over and over. As far as I can ascertain, the war bands of heretic Astartes known as the World Eaters were once one of the Emperor's original Space Marine Legions. They were allegedly once known as the Warhounds, and even before their reunification with their gene sire, the traitor Primarch known as Angron, they had a reputation for bloody brutality. Speaking of their gene father, the story of Angron is one steeped in tragedy, but also horror. From what I can gather from the records of the Avenging Sun, when the young Primarchs were scattered under mysterious circumstances, fate found Angron on the planet of Nuceria. Unlike some of his brothers, Angron's early existence was not a pleasant one. From an early age, the Primarch was forced to fight in gladiatorial combat for the amusement of the sadistic techno-barbarian warlords known as the High Riders that ruled the planet. Like the other slaves, Angron was implanted with the psychosurgical devices known as the Butcher's Nails, which were implanted deep into a gladiator's brainstem and enhanced and augmented their aggression to inhuman levels. Eventually, Angron led his slave brothers and sisters in a brave but ultimately doomed rebellion against their slave masters. As Angron prepared to die in a last stand with his fellow slaves, he was teleported away without warning by the Emperor of Mankind, who was wedding in orbit and had no intention of allowing one of his sons to be destroyed. Angron never forgot or forgave his father for what, in his eyes, was the ultimate betrayal. When united with his legion, a legion he did not respect or want, but one which was desperate for the approval of its gene father, the newly named World Eaters were fitted with the Butcher's Nails, transforming their already aggressive 12th Legion into psychopathic berserkers. During the apocalyptic events of the Great Horus Heresy, the World Eaters sided with Horus and the traitors. Though many records from that time have been destroyed or hidden in inquisitorial vaults, it's thought that the World Eaters Legion became even more savage and depraved during this time. Along with the Emperor's children, Death Guard and Sons of Horus Legions, the World Eaters purged those amongst their own whose loyalty to the Emperor could not be changed on the planet of Istvan Free. It is known that the World Eaters were present during the Istvan Dropsite Massacre, in which three Loyalist Legions, the Iron Hand, Salamanders and the Raven Guard, were all but destroyed. The World Eaters, along with their allies Lorgar and the Wordbearers Legion, devastated Ultramar in what was known as the Shadow Crusade, which helped fuel the phenomenon known as the Ruin Storm. According to my Lord Commander, this crucially helped keep Gilliman and his Ultramarines away from Holy Terror until it was too late. It is also said that during this time, Angron ascended to Demonhood with the assistance of Lorgar and became the terrible and wrathful being that we know today. During the siege of the Imperial Palace, the World Eaters were a devastating but an uncontrollable force. Some accounts say that the World Eaters were first to reach the walls of the Imperial Palace, whilst others say it was the Night Lords. It is rumoured that Angron was banished back to the warp after fighting the Angel Sanguinius in the final hours of the siege, but the wounds that the Blood Angels Primarch suffered were severe. In the years since the Great Heresy, 
The world leaders are fractured into many war bands as they fought other trader legions and themselves for resources and survival. The most famous incident occurring on the world of Scalifrax, where 8th Captain Khan the Bloody earned his new moniker as Khan the Betrayer. Since retreating to the Eye of Terror in the Galactic Northwest, the methods employed by these warbands vary on the whims and preferences of whomever leads that particular warband, but all favour close assault, the better to claim worthy skulls. Sergeant Ajax tells me that though this does not stop the world leaders from using ranged warfare, and many warbands still make use of heresy-era armoured assets such as land raiders and predator battle tanks, the pilots now fused biologically to their vehicles. Demon engines such as Mauler Fiends and Heldrakes can often also be seen stalking alongside them, eager to take in the bounty of skulls and blood and souls. Many lone world leaders have now become what are known as Sages of Slaughter, and they follow no agenda or plan. They simply travel from place to place, becoming one with rage itself. The ever-agonizing drilling of the butcher's nails in their head driving them to claim more and more skulls in their bloody god's name. Many attract like-minded warriors to them, though these are just as likely to find themselves on the wrong side of these berserkers' chain axes as the enemy. In recent years, however, the world leaders have been seen in warbands of increasing size and frequency. Many renegades have had ever more potent and complex versions of the butcher's nails implanted into their brainstems by the berserker surgeons, themselves once former apothecaries of the world leaders. Sergeant Ajax and his platoon were part of a task force that was sent to delay what was rumoured to be the largest gathering of world leaders since the days of the heresy, heading towards the Malak system. It is said that Angron himself is leading this armada, and Ajax told me that nothing can even slow their advance through the void. Information from the region is unreliable, but unconfirmed reports of Imperial troops turning on one another have began to filter through to the Logos Historica. All accounts differ, save for one common theme. Sergeant Ajax has also heard this name, and I later discovered that the remainder of his platoon were not slain by traitor Astartes or the hordes of blood cultists known as jackals, but torn apart by their own comrades. He mentions something that the reports also confirm. Something that they call the murder curse. But that is a story for another day. I am the Chronicler and I will continue to work to uncover the truth for the most honoured Lord Commander, for the benefit of the Imperium. Consider subscribing to join the quest for knowledge. The Emperor protects.